The exquisitely detailed gold-laden carapace of the Banner Defender begins to ask some very interesting questions. What is the future of design, and if we were to ever encounter an alien race, how might their ships be created? Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back to an Architect Reviews, the series in which I use my professional skills in the field of architecture to examine something in the digital world. Today we're behind the wheel of the Bennu Defender, the newest alien ship to make its way into Star Citizen, and we're going to be examining it in a little bit different of a way. We're going to be looking at it through the lens of architectural theory as opposed to practice, as its design language is so alien to what we're used to seeing that it needs a completely different kind of explanation. So this won't be so much a criticism as it will be a dive into what the future might have in store for humans in a super advanced civilization or possibly super advanced aliens should we ever come across them. Also, if you should be interested enough in this Banu ship to want it for yourself, be sure to follow me on Twitch, as I'm going to be doing a giveaway in one of my next streams. So I hope you'll join me on this journey as we take a little bit deeper of a dive into the world of architecture and design. Now immediately, some of you may be wondering, how the heck does a ship like this have any connection to the real world? And I can understand that sort of response, but as we begin to draw some comparisons, you'll start to see it more and more clearly. Let's begin today with something that we currently use in architecture called parametric design. It's very similar, actually, to coding in, say, video games, where you're entering a set of variables to create a desired effect. In architecture, we can use programs like Rhino and Grasshopper to create surfaces just using visual programming. It's up to the designer to choose what variables to use. For example, a very simple one would be a solar study conducted through Ecotech, which you can use to inform exactly where you should be putting solar shading. I've used this exact same sort of system before in my undergraduate thesis, where I utilized the program to create a roof system that would respond kinetically to the user's needs below. So if it got really warm, it could open up and respond by releasing heat, or if it were a cold winter day, it could open up to increase solar heat gain. And in case you're wondering, my name was inspired by this project when I was creating my YouTube channel. The Braun Museum in Los Angeles by DSNR, for example, utilized this exact same system to determine the size and orientation of the openings in its now iconic facade. One step beyond this might be utilizing not only parametric design to create the facade's orientation, but also to consider the material itself and how it might respond to the environment. This project, called the Hygroscope, created by Aka Menges in collaboration with Stefan Reichert, uses parametric design not only to create the facade's orientation, but to also consider how material can be used to either induce or reduce airflow depending on humidity and temperature. This, though, is a model and is very theoretical about what we might accomplish in the future. Returning to the subject of the video, the Banu Defender then, I think that this is going even beyond the theoretical that we just explored. Following parametric design and programming to its logical conclusion, the next step might actually be biological. And I don't think it's any accident that the Banu Defender looks like a crab. I think the thought behind this is that a super advanced civilization like the Banu may be so far ahead of us that they have an absolute handle on their version of DNA and therefore can manipulated at will to create whatever form they seek, say a spaceship hull. And so rather than using a 3D printer or constructing it via super advanced machines, they're actually growing their spaceships and then adding on say the armor and the design bits afterward. Looking at the ship through this lens that I've now established, I think we can start to understand the interior a little bit better. So let's step inside and take a look. The hard carapace of the exterior is contrasted by its soft innards, which is both organic and technological in nature. Notice the pulsing of the lights on the interior as if the creature is breathing with the energy that flows through it. The interior is really a work of art, and I really do have to compliment the CIG designers here. They've outdone themselves once again with an absolutely gorgeous design. The idea that this has grown is all well and good, but somebody still had to model this. And the amount of time and effort that went into this is pretty clear to me. I can see why maybe there were a few delays in getting this out to us. 
This is a lot more complex than a Drake ship interior, and to get this to look right and to look good would have taken a lot of iterations because you skirt the line really close between beautiful and ugly when you're making something inspired by organic things. It's not easy to pull off, and I think they did actually pull this off. The eccentric nature of the organics combined with the eccentric nature of the Banu who occupied this space create this incredibly ornate interior where every nook and cranny has some detail waiting to be found. Even something as simple as a door is thought of organically. The stairs themselves are, are rib-like, with the lights being integrated into those ribs and bone structure. The cool blue lights do give it a much more alien feeling, but at the same time give it a much more calming feeling for its otherwise very claustrophobic size. And the warm lights on the floor also give it a little bit more warmth than it might not otherwise have. I also like how they're integrating everything into the bone structure of the interior, like lights, controls. Even the canopy itself is very much organic, like a, an eye of some kind. But what about the interior from a design standpoint, as in the amenities? Well, it's hard for me to judge the success of this space based off of human needs, because this was designed for an alien race. It seems they lay down like we do, but do they excrete like we do? I'm not so sure, and so the lack of a bathroom I don't think is something that I can really peg this design for. Something I find interesting about this ship though is that despite its relatively small size, there are two pilots and two beds, which leads me to believe that the Banu have an entirely different way of looking at fighters. It seems that it's not co-pilot and pilot because there really is no hierarchy here. It's more like there are two pilots flying in tandem, maybe something like Pacific Rim. And I think that is actually in the lore if I'm not mistaken. It's created this very interesting spatial feeling where there is, like I said, no hierarchy to it. You want to find the pilot seat, but I really think that either of these is the pilot seat. It's whatever one you prefer. You can't really fly it with another human, that's not how our brains work. But you could have a co-pilot managing your systems at least. It seems the Banu are going to be utilizing this ship to its fullest potential, as it is designed for them in the lore. Speaking of full potential and combat, the ship comes equipped with four tachyon cannons, which have a very interesting behavior in Star Citizen. It's very much unlike anything we've seen before. These weapons are actually hit scan, as in they instantly hit the target you're aiming at. Now, it does sound like that would be a little bit like cheating, but it actually isn't. It's very hard sometimes to hit a target because you have to be so precise with it at great distances. And on top of that, the tachyon cannons really aren't that powerful. I was fighting against a pirate Connie here, and as you can see, I fired quite a few shots at it. Now this could come down to a few things. It could be that they just need to be balanced, or it could be that they're firing so quickly, as in their hit scan, that the server just can't keep up with the registry. I'm not quite sure what it is. Hopefully we can have this resolved in a future patch if it is one of those two. I think this is a really interesting way to look at alien ships. It's not something that just looks different, like with a different skin, it's something that's completely different in the way it looks, sounds, and feels. This is a different sort of flying style than you would have in any other ship. And so I like where they're going with alien ships and I hope they keep this up with the other races. So for me, the Bandit Defender goes beyond what I expected it to be. It's not just an alien looking ship, there's something more to it. Its very organic look is derived from the idea that this advanced race might have an alternative way of constructing ships through growing them as opposed to building them. Design and modeling wise, it is quite the achievement. It is gorgeous in every way. It's not going to be for everybody. Organic design can be somewhat off-putting for some, but for me personally, I really like this take on alien design. And I think it bodes well for the much-anticipated Bennu Merchantman, which is yet to be developed. It's a large trading ship by the same species of alien, and so I'm very excited to see what they come up with for a much larger interpretation of what they've laid out here on the Defender. But what do you guys think? Do you like the way the Bennu Defender looks? Do you hate it? Let me know down in the comments section below, and don't forget, if you do love this ship, I will be giving away one of these on my Twitch stream, so make sure you click on the link down below in the description. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I hope to see you guys next time.